Now, did you know how important creative play is for your toddler's development? It's not just fun, although it is fun, it also affects their imagination and even their future numeracy skills. Joining us today on the Anne Mum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group, child development experts Emma Hurrell and Nathan Wallace. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. Let's start with you, Emma. Firstly, um, what would you call creative play? It's spontaneous, self-directed play, during which children have the freedom to express their thoughts and feelings, and it can be initiated through different contexts and materials. But I think the beauty of creative play really shines through when children use a familiar object, but in a new and unusual way. So we're not just talking about painting and, and finger painting and that sort of thing? No, I mean, there's a variety of different creative play activities which we'll, which we'll be speaking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Um, Nathan, when kids use their imagination, what's going on in their brains? Um, it's really about using both sides of the brain. The stuff that we tend to want our kids to produce, you know, what colour is this and what number comes after that, it's all very left brain. Yeah. So creative prey, I think, more is a right brain thing. And really true intelligence is found in that connection between the left and the right brain. So in the brain, this area called the corpus callosum that joins the left and the right brain, um, it's lots to do with integrating, and it's just lots to do with intelligence. So that's really exercised and strengthened by creative play. And okay. just like Emma said, that creative play means that it's the opposite to what adults do. There is no outcome. Mm. You don't have to produce anything at the end. There doesn't have to be any purpose. Right. It's about... I think of it as like I used to build dams in the creek when I was a kid. Yeah. There's no outcome to that because the tide's going to wash it away. There's no one's even necessarily going to see it. Yet kids will spend hours doing those sorts of unstructured, yeah. mm. non-purposeful. I used to get lumps of clay and dry them out and then sort of carve little holes in them and then fill them up again. Right, there you go. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> hours of entertainment. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, Emma, so why is it so important? Oh, I mean, we've mentioned that it allows them, you know, that freedom to express their thoughts and their feelings, which is so important. But it also allows for sensory exploration and motor skill development. Um, I mean, it fosters mental growth because mm -hmm. they have to come up with new ideas and, and problem solve. Um, it develops their language skills and, and social skills and and um, as mm -hmm. Nathan said it's a lot of creative play activities involve those initial stages of numeracy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is it creative play with the adult or is it we're talking just on their own with the children? It can be both but you just have to be careful because um, our children are so much better at it than adults yeah. and adults are um, used to being in charge and directing so an adult, if I'm an adult gets involved they're often try to make it towards purposeful okay. and structured and That's yeah, not so what we're after. no. So let the but I think have adults involved, but let the child lead. They're the experts on play. Trust them. So when I had um, when I only had two children before the third one, mm -hmm. we used to play. One of them would dress up as Superman and he would lead around, and I would just have the newborn baby and follow around and be his sidekick. Right. That's essentially, and we would just sit in the car for ages and pretend to drive it and all sorts of things. Okay. Like basically, they're going. Oh, I'm so tired, but that was creative play, wasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> He's leading it. Yeah. Yes, yep. yes. He mm -hmm. was definitely leading it because mummy was a zombie. <laughs> okay, can you give us some examples of the best kind of creative play? Emma? <clears throat> I would say um, an activity that can encourage siblings to play together would be a activity like fort building. I mean, we all loved fort mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. and children can use large sheets and blankets and um, clothing pegs and rubber bands and they can spend hours building forts together and I think it's really important that we also come up with activities that really allow the siblings to to, to, to join together and, and yeah, play yeah, together. Yeah, a bit of cooperation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah, and and bubbles. I mean, bubbles. You can't oh, go yeah, wrong with bubbles. Bubbles can't go wrong. Kids yeah. love bubbles. Yeah. Actually, that yeah. is true. Bubbles and forts would be two great things to do. Mm. And as a parent, when you see your children building a fort together, you do feel really quite yeah. virtuous. Like... Look at my children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not near the screens. They're just building a nice little fort. Yeah, they're not pulling each other's hair yeah. out. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone's playing nicely. Yeah. This is great. Yep. Uh, finally, we've got a, a question from a viewer, Carla McKay. Um, what are some tips to encourage siblings to play together? Well, apart from the fort that we've just answered yeah. there. Mm -hmm. One of the big um, tips I think I can give parents for siblings to play together is when you have the second child, parents often set up sibling rivalry accidentally by going, OK, I want to make sure my second baby gets the same attention as the first baby. So when the first um, child's asleep, um, I will... Uh, so, sorry, when the second baby's asleep, I'll give child number one all this extra attention that he's now missing out on. That sets the first child up to think life's a whole lot better when that baby's in bed and it is gone. So what I do is the opposite to that, is that when the baby's in bed having a sleep, and then you say to the three-year-old, mum's lying on the couch having a rest, play by yourself. Um, and then when the baby is up and the baby's fed and changed and held their yeah. needs met, then you give the one-on-one -on -one time to the three-year-old. And the three-year-old with the baby in your arms, and the three-year-old starts to think, 
life's a whole lot better when the baby's around. Yeah. And you set it up for siblings to get on I well. I see. We can play way. Superman for hours with Mummy when she's got the newborn that's baby right, in that's her right. arms. That's right, that's right. It was a great game. OK, yeah. well, that's excellent advice. Thank you so much for joining us today, both of you. Okay. Coffee Group is brought to you by Anne Mum Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, if you have any worries that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, you can message the website on screen, uh, the cafe Facebook page as well, if you like. Now, our one contributor will win this cool ebook from Anne Mum. Hang on, is it going to... Frankie the Frightened Frog. Yes, it allows you to record your voice reading the story. Frankie was a frog. Oh, sorry, Frankie, you're out. This week's winner is Carla McKay. Congratulations. <laughs>